Hi, my name is Matt Emo of Invent Thermal. Welcome to Raychem Connects, where we connect you to the product. Today we'll be discussing the importance of instrument winterization. Why do we care about instrument winterization? We care because when instruments freeze, plants go down, and we want to avoid that. The way that we avoid instruments freezing is by putting them in a winterized enclosure. One of the first things to think about when you're doing winterized enclosures is planning. We want to get involved in planning early. Getting involved early is cheaper and faster and makes sure that your construction schedule stays on track. Planning later means that we're taking instruments out of service and we're, and we're adding more complexity, field measurements, and more cost, which is something we all want to avoid. There are two types of enclosures. We have hard enclosures, as you can see next to me, and soft enclosures. Soft enclosures are not good for a multitude of reasons. One of the main ones being is that sometimes they get forgotten to be put on. Winterized enclosures, hard enclosures, that will never happen. The next thing to think about is the area classification. Inside of an enclosure, typically because it is a sealed unit, we have the inside has its hazardous location, whereas outside could be general purpose. There's a difference and that's important to remember. The next thing to think about is the size of instrument. We can have instruments that can be this small, that can fit into this size of box, or we can have instruments that can be huge, the size of a garage door. So we need to make sure that we figure that out as soon as possible, and that's a major consideration. The different types of instruments that you typically see are pressure, flow, and level. The easiest way to determine the difference is typically by the number of tube bundles. Pressure has one tube bundle coming from one location. Flow, you typically have two locations. And level, you also have two locations. Those are easy things to remember and consider when we're doing enclosures. The next thing to think about is EHT type. This demo has two types of EHT. We have SR, self-regulating, and MI. Usually you'll only see one type inside of an application. It's important to think about that and think about it early to make sure that the heat trace is size for the application that you're using. Lastly, we want to talk about heating. You want to make sure that with heating, that you have your heater and that it's sized for the voltage that you're using. If you're using 120, size your heater to 120. The next thing to consider is heat loss. This enclosure, like your house, loses heat. You want to make sure that your, your heater is sized for the area and for the, the size of, of heat loss that you have to make sure that the temperature inside the enclosure stays warm. That's important to remember. For an enclosure this size and freezing temperatures, you're looking at about 100 to 150 watts. You also want to consider that you want to have a control mechanism, in this case a thermostat, to ensure that the inside temperature stays at where, you rec where your customer specified the set point to be. Lastly, we're looking at a, a tip that I have for you. A tip is the fact that this enclosure is not an electrical junction box. Therefore, the components inside of it, you need to make sure that there are no open wiring and that every component in here is rated for some kind of outdoor environment. That's also important to think about when you're doing maintenance, that, that when you're doing maintenance, this enclosure gets opened and the heater and thermostat, you want to make sure are good for being in an outdoor environment because if they're not, then when you open the, the enclosure and there's a little bit of rain or water or sleet or snow, that the heater will stop failing and you'll have to replace it, which is an expense that nobody wants to have. If you have any more information, please contact your area sales manager. Thank you.